leveraging on that and I want to stop because I so, <laughs> so I just boom, 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 boom. okay let's go and I I I most times I'm a solo man even in the comments I, I do not really have anybody to, to sit with or help with you know just hello I trust you or anybody I see they she feels that I'm boom I'm out again to go do some other things and all so it's it's when I know I don't have anybody to rely on during the exam or during test I give it my all. Like during the exam, I I give it my hundred percent. During practical mm. classes, I give it my hundred percent. During assignments, make sure you submit, find a way to submit it, and all. So that's for academics. So I know, okay, when it's time for exam, that's one month of exam. Ha! Ah, when you see me, eh, you be like, ah, just come for hug. <laughs> you know, that sacrifice. You are giving it mm. everything. You are sacrificing everything. And when it's time, when it's time to do other other things, say um, comrade duties or you know student leadership and everything, I used to be mm. a parliamentarian. There are times you'd go out at night to attend to student issues. You know during electioneering process, I, I I can say I've practically witnessed and be a catalyst to electing a vice president and a president of the students' union. Which yes, yeah. and and both one served, one is currently serving. And um, and I, I am I am proud of, of the young man he is, you know, he is delivering as he should. You know, doing that, you know, days you'd go by eleven, you know, there are days I would go for meetings and I would come back eleven, only me on bike in the estate, everywhere is dry, everywhere is dark. You feel like, ah, God, if I should survive today, I would not go out again tomorrow. Is it like I will see myself going out because why? Now me no waiting at the fine. So mm. There is life is about sacrifices, life is about balance. And one thing about it, one thing about it, if you know what you are looking for, look for mentors, look for role models that you, you you can watch how they are doing it, what they are doing it, and how is it applicable to you. Always know that there is difference between mentorship and hero worshiping. Most young people get it wrong. Oh. The majority of what you have now is hero worshiping. Mm. They, they are all highty and mighty and they worship you and they want to copy you. No, we are different, unique people. Mm. As, as long as you are an individual, you do not bear the sun. Even identical twins are two, are two separate individuals. So you should you should know you should know when to copy, when to model around the person, and when to step back it's not everything that's applicable if 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 one of my role models back then i listen i i i listen to uh uh, uh sad guru sad guru sad guru is an indian uh, philosopher and a very very this wise man i i i listen to him he talks about life he talks about experiences and all he even if i want to i i cannot copy him word for word i only see logic is, is a very logical and analytical person and I, I take cues from what he says and now it's applicable to my own life and all. I, I cannot model him because of uh, religious differences. Do you understand? I'm a Muslim. He's uh, a Sadhguru. I think he does Buddhism. Mm. Correct? Or yeah, he's Buddhist. a Buddhist. He's a, he's a Buddhist. So I, I, I even even Buddha as he is, I, I read I read um, I read books on i've read about buddha analects of confucius the filial son i read about them i you know they had in-depth wisdom around this thing you know books out of what sun Tzu, the great general i read about him yeah you know, all those napoleon um all this even even uh empress key how she summons a uh, uh, councilman uh, attained power plots you know, those kind of things this in this uh books for seasons of power by robert yeah Green. robert Green yeah. is one of my favorite uh, authors so there are things you could model around it so there is, one should make distinguished line between role modeling mentorship and hero worshiping and that's and that same line is very very small most people they just want to copy what no no you shouldn't oh. you should model around it model around oh. it that's mm. that's the only way for you to grow out of their shadows to become mm. an individual like you are. 
like mm. you're, you're supposed to so once you do that as well but when it comes to leadership define your own leadership style mm. define your own leadership style look for what suits you i am of i am more of a flexible leader you know i i i i well i'm i'm still i'm still in self discovery of my leadership style i i, I don't yeah. want to boast of myself but when i'm when you know there are some things you cannot boast of until a certain level yeah so i'm not i'm not at that certain level i'm still young boy i still mentors and new role models so <laughs> so yeah so definitely you know the kind of leader that you have find yourself no i, I there is concept i came across far back as age of 16 ikigai mm. is that oh, ikigai concept? yeah yeah ikigai, yes if if you can understand your ikigai and answer those questions i think i think you've already modeled your life mm. to me if you can answer your ikigai what is your ikigai everything answer those questions and everything then i guess I, your 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 life is all you need just to just put extra effort and you know but for me self discovery happened when i was 15 i i i i let's stop people i i discovered the real me the illuminator in me yes mm. that's that's what i call it guy in me munio here is the one speaking but the illuminator in me is he who does all the works and and all so it's once you discover yourself i think self discovery is is is, is it should be the first thing but self discovery doesn't happen on one day self discovery mm. is a is a journey and there are some things some skills some gifts i've not yet even discovered mm. Mm. for some day i could just swap and i can do wishes come true <laughs> i don't know so yeah so <laughs> i think i think for every individual young day uh, and undergraduates out there there's nothing you can achieve first mm. is no ask yourself why am i doing this because that why is what will push you through when when you, when you begin to have self doubt mm. why am i even doing this where am i going to mm. that's where you are going to be your drive your jet your motivation your fuel your light in dark times because we are my going to I cannot yeah. to climb the mountain hill and sit down there because uh, the rock are sharp what should i do should i get myself a boot get myself a rope get myself an helmet get myself things and food and warm clothes along my journey that is it don't it's it's okay to be tired it's okay to not know what to do at the right time take a break sleep over it pray over it reflect over it but don't stop Don't stop. If anything is possible. Don't stop. Never stop. Just just keep moving. Just keep moving. Awesome. This is wonderful, Monir. Ah. You are a disciplined mind. I can say categorically that you're a disciplined mind. And um, the truth is, you know, for your generation, your mindset is rare. Do you understand what I'm saying? Thank you. For your much. generation, the kind of mindset you have is very, very rare. Thank you. Um, this is a focused mindset, and I like the way you were able to you were able to break it down, um, touching on different areas that concerns the life of people in your generation. Now, I want you to share. Um, some insights that could help the younger people, the Gen Z um, in your generation. For example, um, you are a global ambassador of the award, London, UK, and the uh, World Literacy, uh, Literacy Foundation. You are a 2020 Millennium Fellow and team lead for Hall's Prize for FUNAB. You are the director of programs of the Spirit of Enterprise and executive member of Yali Ogo. Now, these things don't jump on people. For young people who want to also take advantage of global opportunities like this, can you share insight 
on what they need to do. What are the things that prepare or position someone of the younger generation to be able to leverage on these things? And what are the things that these people look for? So that if, if there's someone there, a teenager, a early 20s, watching this and hears you, the person can take a leaf from what you say and run with it. Thank you very much. So um, basically, um, number one thing is for me, uh, because I, I would like to put myself in the center yeah. of the story here. Uh, for me, it's it's meaningful impact and distinguished service. Like I say, wherever niche I find myself, I try to to do more than the ordinary. Okay. You know, um, as a member of JCI, um, you you have this global active citizen spirit in you, and doesn't it doesn't even have to be a member. You do have to be a member of JCI for you to have the global active citizen in you, knowing what to knowing what is right to do it at the right time when there is a need. When when there is a need, uh, what's the saying? The saying goes as when the need arises, you need to take the lead. Uh, I think I, I, th I think yeah. you should understand. Yeah. So it is that is that is the drive. I okay. Building my building my profile, I knew I knew I wanted to attract while while uh, while out of school. I need to build my profile, even if I want to work with or work for. I want to work with multinationals and big corporations. That has always been the goal. So, and United Nations has always been part of my. Uh, it has been on my, on my, on my radar. I want to work with United Nations, definitely. So, um, I started with I registered as a United Nations volunteer. Then from there, I, I do social projects through JCI, community development projects. Um, in school, I volunteer for a lot of events, Ogun Digital Summit, TEDx, uh, other events in school that are human capacity development and social entrepreneurship or community development. So I I volunteer a lot. I'm a volunteer. I'm still a volunteer. If you have any big major events now, I volunteer for it. You no, know, I was doing I keep track record of every of my activity. I have a note where I put everything down, every activity. I okay. I, 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 so now for you should know, okay, if for my for my niche, I, I want to be a corporate work in a corporate person as a young professional because I now want to be a project manager. And there are okay. some things that they look out for. So I, okay. which I understood already. Your leadership your experience and your influence hey. so for you so this this these are cues to position you for bigger opportunities okay how do how, how, how did i go about the uh the millennium fellowship the millennium fellowship is a leadership and social impact uh, program by uh, millennium campus um, network and United Nations academic impact. So they select young, bright minds from higher institutions across the world, and they, they train them. They go through leadership trainings, and also you have to have a project of impact you want to do to the society. Because these are the criteria. You would see lots of long essays. You write. You write essays. You answer essays. And tell you, uh, you ask you questions like, why do you do this? Why do you want us to select you? Mm. What do you stand to gain from all this? From this, why would it help you as well? Because they believe life. Me, I don't believe uh, life is just give. Life is about give and take, however small it is. Mm. Even if I give you one million naira thing, as small as a thank you is given back as well. So they believe in. So that your leadership. So they ask you experience. So those are the things that 
that I I I I can say would help you. You need to, you need to you need to you need to have a mind of a leader. Not everybody is born an innate leader. Some develop their leadership skills. You have to develop your leadership skills. You have to you have to develop selflessness, social impact. You have to impact people. So these are the I think those are the two major and this they they look at your drive, your goal, because they ask you, what is your drive? What is your goal? What motivates you? Oh. The, the questions they ask, even if even if you are not even interested in, there are some applications I just apply for that I know I might not even be eligible for. No, they are for postgraduate studies abroad and everything. No, I see the kind of questions they ask, and I be like, so if I am in this position applying for this now, I don't think I am ready. Oh. So by the time I I am ex- I have exposed myself to this kind of questions, this kind of no, I, I I I don't want to say this, but I mean, the Western mind is, it's it's a beautiful mind. I I I'm, I'm not <laughs> they Ask intellectual questions. They don't ask emotional questions. Because oh. majorly in Africa, I don't want to generalize, but majorly majorly in Africa, all we do is emotional questions. They ask oh. analytical and logical questions. It cannot even lie. It will tell, because it's it's more like, it's, just, it's more like, like uh, uh, a psychological evaluation. Because there's a there's a trend to whatever mm. from, from your first question to your last question. Yeah. They lie about your leadership skill. They tell you to give experience. Mm. Your personal story of how you've led people. They ask you uh, in a kind of situation, a, a situation or called how did you manage it? What what happened? Mm. Mm. There's no way if you if you are not if if you are not if you are if you are a dictator, there is no way you would be lenient to call both parties to call for your truth to settle out of the group remove both people from group a dictator will never do that the dictator kicks everybody out of room everybody must do this they must do this a dictator will not say okay team how should we do this it will just tell you so 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 and so do this so so and so do this so so and so do this have a nice time everybody that's what a dictator is it tells you what to do it doesn't give you the opportunity for inclusive leadership so if you, if you tell them i'm an inclusive leader your story in the back end will shoot you in the leg. I'm not sure. So, so those, so for for any young people who want to apply for all these kind of opportunities, there are there are things that would fuel your profile and your career. That's that's your your resume. So, if you are if you are looking to work in the corporate organization, or in the private organization, or in the government parasitals, or what it may, so you need to have. A compelling CV, something attractive that distinguishes you from oh. your colleagues, peers. So that is what I understood from um, from pre- uh, several experiences and uh, um, from trainings so. and all. So I I do well to to look out. I registered on all this. Op- there's opportunity corner. There's youth opportunities. There are all these websites where you see opportunities like that. You apply for them. So once you get them, you you answer your questions sincerely and what you want to get from there. So it's possible. Can you mention those? Can you mention those websites again? Opportunities corner. Okay. Youth opportunities and um, what was the last one? Uh, I think I I I will try to I will try to check and I will, I will get back to you. But I know you have youth right. opportunities corner and youth opportunities. All right. Those are like, okay. like okay. two major ones. I am very conversant with most times. Okay. okay. They, share, they share you global opportunities, fellowship, global ambassador, and all. So position yourself to, to be in those groups. What's they, they have a WhatsApp group. They have over uh, over 10 WhatsApp groups and a lot of people there who have gotten, well, I, I'm a testimony, I've gotten some opportunities there as well if i applied for and all so if you're looking for scholarship looking for internship looking for job placement multinationals big corporations whatever it may fellow anything so opportunities are bound there so you, you could go on them search for them websites to check to, to search for group opportunities and all so if you want to apply for them you can go on youtube how to how to apply for Mandela Washington Fellowship, 
how to add, uh, apply for Millennium Campus Network Fellowship, how to apply mm. for Chevening, how to apply for all those kind of opportunities. So it would position you when the time and opportunity comes for you mm. to. So you need to build your profile, your leadership profile, your social impact profile, because everybody believes now. Everybody, most recruiters are are, are now looking towards. Okay, it's not just book and, and uh, leadership and everything there must be something that differentiates you yeah yeah in your resume i i went hobbies i put i put uh swimming and martial arts there even mm. without even without me okay swimming might be generic but martial arts martial arts wow that's i've already gotten that one that one second wow it will make you review my my resume yeah, in, yeah. resuming <laughs> reviewing it again your eyes will see something you've not seen before <laughs> So and you should be careful with the choice of words you use during applications and your resume and all. So those are those are the things that one should work around. You should know time there could there are yet times and seasons this thing during summer. Most and most of them are summer. Yeah, this there are summer applications and all. So mm. I I guess I guess those are the opportunities would come. Open your mind to it. Um surround yourself with people we share global opportunities like on my whatsapp status my status is like my close community i have over four thousand contacts of people so i share global opportunities on my whatsapp status i for also from groups i share to groups and my whatsapp status as well so that's that and position yourself as well you know during application they'll tell you drop your whatsapp uh, your facebook url your LinkedIn URL, your Instagram URL, your social media, they check before they take you. So you should be careful of what you what you post. What you do on your social media. Your social media is now your modern day resume. Most yeah. people don't know that. Your social media page is your modern day resume. If that's a track record, that's where they will get the in it. So I know some I, I used to I used to laugh when some people say what I post is not is not a representation of me. It's it's subconsciously it is. If you don't if you don't buy the idea of uh, of uh, terrorism, you don't post things that are related to it. One way or the other, the subconscious it might be alter ego, it might be anything, but subconsciously. So, so one should be careful of what we push out, mostly on Twitter. Most people don't understand that it's a very delicate place. Now modern day um, employers do not have much time to check your. Just check your cover letter is the most important thing. They don't even check resumes most times. The cover letter is the most important thing. So your cover letter must gather your experience, gather your professionalism, your certificates and everything, years of experience and everything. That should buy on everything. Cover letter must have it. Then your they will say drop your URL, your Twitter, your so you should be careful. You should not just join any social media trend or hashtags or anything. You should keep it as much as I don't want to put it as sane as possible. Where well, I, I Gen Z, they are the wow. Gen, I'm a Gen. No, I am a Gen Z. I'm saying I'm, a, uh, I, I'm an early Gen Z. I'm an early Gen Z because I was born in the 1990s. So I'm an yeah. early Gen Z as well. So, but the late Gen Z or the new Gen Zs now, they are they are more of like I don't know. So they, you should try to keep it, tone it down. Hmm it down something something you would not want to be held against you later don't even post it mm. because it, it's a digital mm. signature everybody's watching yeah there's some people that are always screenshotting whatever i post i was surprised when someone called me one time i said send it back to me that he posted this 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 i was like ah i don't know remember <laughs> like you know most times i do flash fiction writing and I, I just write stories and i post and someone's like please what's the continuation of this i was like ah it's a flash fiction. I just write things I play in my head. It's, it's nothing serious. Yeah. So there's a people are keeping track record. Employers they will check your posts. You can check your your feeds and everything. Things you repost. You, know, you should use your name, not nickname. Mm-hmm. If you want to use your nickname, put it in bracket. Because that that could be uh, for me. The Illuminator is like my social nickname and my corporate nickname. I I I am adopting it. Because that's that's the meaning of Munir. Munir is Arabic, and the meaning in English is the Illuminator. Mm. So, so if if your name is 
if your name is uh, uh Sahid, you should not go and put Sido. <laughs> so you just uh, like you no. Know, you no know, people want to share opportunities on the start searching online. Why do side online? Why do side? Sorry, I'm using the online. Why do I apologize? No problem. Just trying to like you know. No problem. Online. Why do side online? Why do side and and all you just is Olasi do like Olasi do like. <laughs> no, it shouldn't be. So even when your employers check your, it might, it might be, it might be, it might be a brilliant mind. You understand? It might be young and everything. Might, might, might have a nice resume and everything. But that name already told. I was even, uh, it was even like 2020. Yes, if I'm correct. During uh, this time, they said like they will not give people visa. Like you have to drop your your Facebook and your social media pages for you yeah. to be given visa. I'm like, wow. So all those people who have used hashtags that are anti-government, anti, you know, derogatory statement, hate speech and everything, it's a no-no for them. So you should be careful of what you push out there on your social media. Social media is now your modern day resume. It depicts who you are, whether you whether you want to accept it or not. So you should also craft craft your social media pages. Because that is that is the that is the number one stop of, of what you have. If you've gotten a new job role, a new position, a new career, a new skill, or new um, um, career shift, say you want to move from, um, say, just graphic designing to visual communication, they are two different things. A graphic designer oh. just a content creator uh, and creative director gives you, oh, yeah, put this thing there. All you know is just put shapes, put color, put fonts, and design it and send to them. But a visual communicator understands corporate communication understands people, the sociology mm. of people, understands content creation, understands content marketing, mm. understands UX as well, user mm. experience. Yeah. yeah These this are skill sets that forms a job title or a position that you put there. So you should, if, if, if you've honed your skills to become a visual illustrator or a visual communicator, a brand strategist, so you should just put it there brand strategist whatever thing you do brand strategist media enthusiast tech enthusiast this 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 so it should be, it should be that short like just looking at your headline you should know okay this is what this person is capable of and all mm. so those are positioning strategies for you you should position yourself for opportunities when this things arise and apply for as much as you can i can categorically say i apply for a lot of things almost every day why oh. even even when i check my i have jobber man profile well it's 100 percent and i boost it almost every every seven days oh. i might not really need i might not really need those jobs they send me meals you know, to, to bring it out but when i check it i try to apply i see i see questions that employers ask is part of me doing research, HR, the project management, yeah. giving me an insight on okay when I'm ready to take on jobs. What is yeah, the modern day HR? What is modern day recruitment officer looking out for? So these are the questions. In fact, they tell you to set your time of interview. I can get it. It's that flexible now. Set your time of interview. Give us two to three days of uh, time of interviews. How many years of experience do you have? I applied that um, <laughs> um what is what is this um this new uh, that that sponsored this um uh, BB Ninja what's the name of this not a the other one um, um uh, I forgot the other one the, yeah, that's so all there. I, yeah yeah I, I applied for it and I saw the type of questions they ask I was like okay wow even though they rejected my application I was like wow you can reject my application well. I, I guess I guess um, I'm not yet, I'm not yet good enough. No. But you have learned something. About you have already. learned something. So do that. Apply for more applic applications that you can. Okay, there was time I applied for United Nations SDG 17. You know, top individuals. You no, know, it exposed me. It gave me a new sense of of global standard. I, what that are they looking I, for? Yeah, because people there now, people there now are on Asia's Forbes. Under 30, you see wonderful people, ocean prize. This one, I was like, wow. So even me, I, I'm just trying to kid me. I'm just trying to kid myself when I'm trying to apply for this. These are for the top, top boys, like top ladies and gentlemen, not mm. you know, small, small boys like me. But it has given me mentally, 
that's always mm. made on their level as well. Because mm. right now, if the opportunity comes again from the office of Sec- uh, United Nations uh, Secretary, yeah. I have positioned my mind that okay, these are what they are looking for, and, I, and I'm, I'm positive for anything that happens. So you have to have that mind, that position, apply for as much as you can. They will reject. You see, uh, we are uh, there are other money table. It's, we had over 1,000 again got clinical application. It was a numerous one, but unfortunately, we are sorry. I regrettably inform you. Ah, thank you. I will, I will respond. Thank you. Thank you very much. Cheers. It's, it's as it's as simple as that, but uh, it has exposed me to another level of life and things. So keep on doing that. I apply for more as much as you can. Number one thing again is. No, no kind of profile you want to build. If you are building a corporate mm. profile, if you are building a social enterprise profile, if you are building an entrepreneurship profile, if you are building a leadership profile, mm. so you should know your profile. Number two is position yourself for opportunities. Search for opportunities. Go for websites that will get you uh, these opportunities, youth opportunities, opportunities corner, careers corner, and those kind of opportunities. Search them. There are hundreds of them online. And number two is always keep your social media profile sane. Keep it sane. Trust me. Mm. Keep it straight, sane mm. and professional. Mm. Try to keep mm. it sane and professional. Because it's 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 your it's your digital identity, whether you like it Wonderful. or not. Yes. Wonderful. Keep on applying. The more you apply, the more experience and better you get at answering essays and all so I think- wonderful 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 this is wonderful <laughs> even people that are not gen z will learn a lot from this um answers that you have given about taking on global opportunities there's somebody that i respect very much in the um, social media space of Nigeria, um, in the person of John Obidi, there's something he usually says on his platform. It says, Africans, your fight is different. Your fight is different. That is, especially for the Gen Z, even the teenagers, that are born in the mid twenties now, they need to understand, like you have rightly enumerated now, that you cannot live within your community, your environment, and think that that is where everything ends. Until you take on global challenges or global opportunities, you will not know how you need to quickly improve yourself. And I like the strategy that you shared today. And I I want to stress on that for anyone listening to this. That's what you are sharing today is what has helped my person, my, my, my person to, to attain to whatever I'm doing now, because, um, I have a tendency of always wanting to do something that is perfect. There is that drive of you want to ensure that everything is perfect before you push it out. So that kind of mind has helped me to always do the best in what I'm doing. And so if I fall short, even after doing the best there, what I usually do like you said, if I put in for an opportunity and they said, sorry, on this occasion, you did not meet it. I'll first of all reply and say, thank you for your feedback, for getting back to me. But if you were kind enough to share some of the things that made me to miss this opportunity so that I would not repeat the same next time I see this kind of opportunity. In fact, I beg them that you to tell me what I did wrong. 
and I usually get the feedback. So when they give me that kind of feedback, I will know that my best needs this addition to it. So I will add that feedback to whatever I'm doing so that the next time something like that happens, you know, if you don't get the feedback, if they don't tell you that this is where you miss it, you will still repeat the same thing that you did because you have not heard, you have not seen why you missed it. But when they tell you this is what you did that was wrong, and you now say, oh, okay, all right. Next time I will not do this. And that is how we grow. Like uh, people say, and I say also, feedback is the food for champions. Feedback is the food for champions. If you, if you take criticism negatively, you miss it. Take it in. Whatever they say, take it. Go and analyze that feedback, and you see that you are you're going to grow. And I must really commend you, Monir, for for your time with us today. My last question to you is just like a parting shot. What will you say um, for someone who has tried many opportunities and was as always? gotten a negative feedback. I'm sure you have been in that cycle before. What can you tell this person? Because they will say that, ah, this person got it, that person got it. Why is my own like that? Okay. What can you tell someone of your age, someone of your generation, on how to bounce back when such things happen? That's my last question for you today. Okay, um, thank you very much for that. So um, basically, for me, when, when I apply for something and it doesn't work out the first time, I feedback, like you have said, sir, like ask for feedback. When, when, I, when I'm applying for something, I do not just apply on their, web, on their website application portal. I have a, a digital, I use Google Keeps notes a lot. So I go back, that's where I fill in my question. There are questions. I copy out their questions there and I put them on answers there. So I will go back there to review it and read those things again. So then that's it. that is what reevaluation is. When you reevaluate it and you see it is not okay, perhaps this is my response here, might not. And you check out if if eventually you check out. The people that they that was they were shortlisted or go and check out their profile. Try to know what kind of people that they have. So this would guide you. Okay, those are the kind of people they are looking for. Then you step up your game to position yourself to be that kind of people they're looking for. It might be as small as 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 your choice of words or as as little as anything. It can be anything. So you reevaluate yourself. And and all. and also you try again. If you if you really if it is something you really want, you try again. Well, for me, if if I try if I try again, I as you I as well look for alternatives as well that are similar to it. So say um, for example, you're trying to get the Chevening scholarship, and and it's not coming through the first time, the second time. The other scholarship aside Chevening. There are Commonwealth scholarship, there are Europe, uh, European um, scholarships, there are scholarships from, try to apply for those as well. Don't put all eggs in the basket. And and um, and um, for the first time, look out for people who have applied before. Send them messages. Cool. Go, and look, go and look out for, for them. Send them messages, casual and direct messages. Don't beat about the bush. Hi. My name is this, 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 this. I saw you were a fellow of this, 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 this in the year, this, 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 this. I am trying to apply for this, this, this. Can you give me one or two tips or give me recommendations to resource that could help me in my own application? Thank you very much. That's all. If the person would reply, the person would reply. If the person is not going to reply, well, there, there, is, there are always more than one person. So try and send them messages like that. And, um, 
don't even if you have access to their phone number don't just call people like that oh. send them text message hello my name is this 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 i would love to have a 10 minutes of your time to discuss this 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 could you fix oh. it that is convenient for you oh. even if it's convenient for that person the person will now say okay call me now That's oh. awesome. or don't just call people and um I, I think that should go out as well when he wants to relate with everybody yeah. irrespective of whether millennial or gen z whether the person is old or young even if the person is younger than you it, mm. it doesn't really matter that's what they call respecting res- the cutting, person's boundaries cutting, respecting boundaries <laughs> respecting other people's you know space hi can i call you it's as simple as that are you busy is it a good time to talk? Even when you call someone, even without informing them, hello, hi, my name is this. Is this a good time to talk? If the person is a very good, if the person is in a bad mood, there's nothing you can ask the person about your application that would come well. Even yeah. the person is feeling obliged to apply just to maybe because of goodwill, you might not get enough information as you should have gotten on a normal day. So you sh- one should uh, put that at hand as well. And, um, just put your mind, be positive, put your mind and uh, that's one thing about me. My mind is, I think, one of my greatest assets. Just believe it that it's possible and if you, so number one, reevaluate yourself. Number two, look for alternatives that are similar. Number three, look for people who have applied before or mm. look for resources on how to apply properly. Maybe mm. you're doing one and uh, be positive. Wonderful. Munir, it's been really, really nice having you on this platform. I mean, a lot of people are going to gain from this. I, I'm so happy. I think you are the youngest uh, guest I've had so far on the platform. If I'm okay. correct, I think you are the youngest. <laughs> and uh, I am so, so happy with what you're doing. And um, you'll definitely be good mentor to many in your generation by virtue of this interview. Once again, I want to appreciate you for sharing these wonderful insights, sharing your profile on the Mentors Lounge. So, my dear uh, followers and everyone watching this uh, today, this is Larry Louise signing off on the Mentors Lounge. Bye for now.